Hello, on this video, I'm going to show you how to create a link list from scratch. I'm going to go over two slides here really quick. And then after that, I'm going to open Visual Studio. And then I'm going to create a link list from scratch using C Sharp. So before we create that, we need to understand what a linked list is. So a linked list is a data structure that is composed by nodes. So each node has two pieces of information. One is the data, and the data can be whatever you want it to be. And the other piece of information is the link. So this link points to the next node. So the next node has the same characteristics as a data, and then the link to the next node, and then the last node points to no. So that's very important. And then you have the name of whatever linked list you have, and then it points to the first node of your linked list. So the advantage of the linked list is that it can grow and shrink at runtime. And because of that, the memory utilization is very efficient because you only use the amount of memory that you need. It's easy to implement, and also it's easy to insert and delete items from your linked list. The problems with the linked list is that traversing is not efficient because you have to go through every single item on your linked list. There's no random access like an array. And also each item that you store will require a little bit more memory because you need to store the data and also you need to store a pointer to the next item. So each individual item will use a little bit more memory when compared to an array However, for the whole thing, you're going to use less memory. All right, so let's write some code now. So I want to create a new project for that, a console application. And then after that, I'm going to create a class library. So right click on the solution, then add a new project. Click on class library, click next. And then create. So now I have two projects here. One is the my linked list. The other one is the custom linked list. So the custom linked list already has a class right here. I'm going to rename this class to linked list. And then inside the custom linked list, I'm going to create another class. And I'm going to name this class a node. And inside this class, I'm going to store whatever data I need to store. So the first step is to make this class generic. So to make it generic, I'm going to put the T here to make it generic. And then after that, I can create a property. And the property is going to be type T of generic. And then the data is going to be whatever data I want it to be. And also I want to make this class public. So this class is generic data type class. Then I have a property, which is the data that this node is going to store. And then after that, I'm going to create a, a link that's going to point to the next item. So this is going to be a public as well. Node type T. Next. And then get and also a set. But this sets, I'm going to put internal only. And then after that, I need a constructor. And it's going to receive a parameter of type T. And I'm going to name it data. Then after that, I'm just going to set this data equals the data that receives a parameter. So this node is very simple, only has three items, which is the data that you are 
trying to store and then a link to the next node and then a constructor. All right, so this is it for the node. Now I want to go to the link list itself and then I'm going to start creating the code right here on this link list. All right, so I'm going to create some properties first. And the property that I need is to find out which one is the first and then which one is the last item in the linked list. And there is a squiggly right here in the T because this class here is not generic yet. To make it generic, I'm going to put a T here. And then now this class is generic. So no red squiggly here anymore. So this is good. So the next item is to create the pointer to the last. So this pointer points to the first, this one points to the last. This is really not crazy necessary for a linked list to work properly. And the last item is the count. So we know how many items is stored on this linked list. All right, so let's keep going. So next I'm gonna, all right, so next is the constructor. However, this constructor here as I wrote, it is not really needed because the first and last we will assume in the new value even if we don't put it here. So not really needed, but I like to put it there just as a reminder that they do start as a new. All right, so the next step is to write the add first method. So the add first method is a method that lets you add a new node on the beginning of this linked list. So first we check if it's a empty list. So if it's an empty list, it doesn't matter where you put them. And also the first and the last pointers will be pointing to this new node and you are done if the list is empty originally. If it's not empty, then you just have to repoint the new node to first and then point first to the new node and then increase the count and you're done for this method. All right, so the next method is to add last. To add last is a similar operation as we do with the add first. So the add last, and again, you check if the list is empty. If it is, then it doesn't matter where you put them. If a list is not empty, then we just add on the end using the last pointer and then increase the count. The next method is the add after and the add after is when you do have a existing node and you want to add a new node right after this existing node. So in other words, you want to insert a new item in the middle of your linked list. So two cases here can happen. If you are adding this new item after the last, that means you're just adding on the last one. So that's an easy operation here. But if you're not on the last, then you do not need to repoint, leave the last alone, and then just insert the new node, making sure that the new node next is pointing to the existing node, and then the existing node next is pointing to the new node. All right, so the next method is to find. So find is when you receive the target, in other words, whatever data you're looking for, and then you do a sequential search to search for each item on your linked list. Now note right here that I'm not receiving a nodes as a parameter. I'm just receiving the data that's inside this node. Then I create a pointer that points to the first element. And then I use a while loop to search for that element. And if it finds, it returns current node. Otherwise it returns null. All right, the next method is to remove first and to remove first is quite easy. If the list is empty, then do nothing. Otherwise you just get the pointer that's pointing to the first element and then start pointing to the second element and then decrease the count. The next method is a little bit more complex and is to remove a given node within the linked list. So I'm going to call the node that I would need to remove the doomed node. And 
the first thing to do is to make sure that the list is not null. This is most likely never going to happen because if you know a node that's inside this linked list, then you know that this linked list is not empty. So this method right here assumes that this doom node actually exists inside this linked list. All right, and if it the doom node happens to be the first item, then we only have a method for that. So just remove the first item and return. Otherwise, we need to do a little bit of more work here. And the work is that you need a pointer to the previous and to the current. And then after that, we're going to go traversing this linked list, comparing the item and see if you find it. And if we find it, we, we will remove it. And the reason we need a point into the previous node is because a node has no reference to the previous node. So we need to constantly be saving and storing this. So once we find the node we're looking for, it's going to be easier for us to remove because we have a pointer to the previous node. So then with a while loop, we go all the way to the node that we're trying to remove and this is the and with this comparison right here we're going to be able to find the doom node and then once we find the doom node and leave this block of code and once we leave this while loop here the current pointer is going to be pointing to the doom node the one that we want to remove and then the previous is going to be pointing to the one before the doom node and we really need this previews here so we can fix its pointer to skip the current one and to finally remove we we'll just make sure the current is not null and if that's the case then the previous dot next is the current not dot next in other words when you do this you just start ignoring the current node the one that's doomed and then once you do that, you do not actually delete the current node. However, the garbage collector knows that there is no way for you to access the current node anymore, and it deletes that current node for you. And then the last step is to decrease the count. All right, and then just for testing purpose. All right, so the last method is a traverse method, and I'm gonna create this only for testing purpose. So any given time, I can just traverse the linked list and then I know the contents of this linked list. And to do that, it's very quickly. So I here I'm just printing the first and the last. Then I create a pointer to the first and then I start to traverse. Now note that you do need to print one more time here after you leave this while loop because the way this is set up is that you print and then you advance to the next node. So once you finish this while loop, you're going to have to print just one more time so you will not lose any item on your link list. All right, so this should be done for the link list. Now I can write a little bit of code to insert items on this link list. So First is to create a object and I think I'm missing the dependency. So right click on dependencies, add project reference and then click here. Yep. So link a list. And with that, I create my link a list and I'm going to pick the definition just to make sure I'm using this link list here instead of using the actual C Sharp library link list. Yep, so that's the link list that I created previously. So good, I'm gonna close it. So first I'm gonna write some code just to add some items on my linked list. So I'm adding several items right here and then I'm going to traverse this link list. So if I run, 
Now I have the first and the last, and then I have my link list. Then after that, I'm going to just add a item after a given node. So I have node A, I'm going to add a new node, and I'm going to type triple X as a data. So if I run, now the data got placed after the node A. And then the last piece of code I'm going to write is just to search for a given item that I know it's there. I know DDD is there. After that, I'm going to remove the target and traverse again just to see if it worked. So here I have removing DDD. And then when I traverse again, the DDD is not there. Now, if I go back here to my linked list, and if you compare this to the actual linked list from the C Sharp library, uh, this is not complete. There's a lot more items that you can put in here to be complete. However, for learning purpose, this is good enough. And there are also other types of linked list. Linked list, for example, that you would have a link here for the next and also a link for to the previous. And then by doing so, it allows you to traverse a linked list going forward or backwards. But the whole purpose of creating this is just to show you how a linked list works behind the scenes. So that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. This is easy and you can do it.